guys, I'm Lydi and I'm Hazel. And if you're new to our channel, we are Journey to Med, two medical students attending Bucks in London. So today's video is going to be about A-level biology. We're going to tell you how to make sure that your knowledge comes across in your exam papers and you get the grades you want to get. We've all been there guys, with a certain topic or just with biology as a whole, mm -hmm. you understand it, you leave that lesson saying, yeah, yeah, I've got this. Yeah. You get the exam paper back and it's like... Okay. Bruh. Especially biology A level, the math scheme is so so specific. So you could be saying the right things, but if you don't say a certain keyword or a certain key term, you're not going to get the mark. Get mark. So <laughs> you just need to get used to using those certain words in your answers, mm -hmm. and that can only happen with one thing, which is practice. You could be answering a question about osmosis. So you can be like, water moves from high concentration to a low concentration. But if you do not mention the word osmosis, you might not get the mark. What you're saying is not necessarily wrong, but you might be missing out keywords or you might be missing out key components of your explanation. I practice saying you're getting more familiar with the mark scheme. You're starting to see certain phrases and words that they like to see in certain questions. You know that if an enzyme question comes up, they want to hear enzyme substrate complex. Obviously, it's different for each exam board and that's why it's so important to do a lot of questions and get familiar with your mark scheme. Of course, there's nothing wrong with doing questions from other exam boards, but first, get familiar with your mark scheme and what you have to know. Biology A-level is so specific that in your answers that specificity has to continue mm -hmm. so there's no point being ambiguous in a biology paper because you're not going to get any of the marks so it's you can never be too specific in an answer just make sure you add as much detail as you can where appropriate wft key words from the question words from the question are so important this doesn't mean that your answer should just be a repetition of the question no. but it means that you need to think logically and make your answer applicable to the context that the question has been given to you use phrases from the question in your answer that's also something they really like and it makes your answer even more specific to the certain context that you're discussing so sometimes in exam questions you can actually get distracted so this time was actually um exposed to me when i was doing the ucat and i was doing abstract reasoning and though like yeah, yeah. some shapes are there to distract you. In a sense, biology A level exams can be the same. So it, you might have a question, they'll give you a graph, they'll give you one page of information. When and then <laughs> an <they'll> essay. <laughs> exactly, and the question will literally require two sentences or so. Yeah. This is not always the case, but sometimes this can be the case. That's why it's important to read the question properly. Take your time when reading the question and ensure that you understand what the question wants from you and what it's requiring from you. Is it telling you to explain? Is it telling you to state? Is it telling you to describe? Also check the number of marks that the question is worth because if a question is worth four marks, you're not going to write in two points or two sentences. You need to adapt yourself to what the question wants from you. By understanding the question, this can be by annotating or drawing something really small to try and get what the question is about. But that doesn't mean that everything given to you is required for that specific question. You might not need the graph until, you know, 9B. You might not need the picture until 9A. Make sure that you use what is appropriate to answer the question. That's why sometimes if I see a big chunk of um, writing, I prefer to read the first question first because sometimes you have to read the text, go to the question, read back the text, mm -hmm. but you can just read the question, read the text. Yeah, that's a good method. I actually never did that because I didn't ever want to like risk missing something out. Okay, if you're really enough. good at noticing things, then that will definitely work for you. Mm -hmm. If you're like me and you're a bit slow, then what I really like doing is if I had a really uh, a lot of text to read for a question, I would go through and underline stuff that I thought might be important so that when I answer the question, I can always refer back to something that I know I read and I feel like that helps my thinking process more. But yeah. both methods work. Yeah. It's definitely up to you. This just shows that there's lots of different ways you can work to get the marks. It's just what best suits you. Another problem some of you may be having with biology is that you spend 10 minutes on a free marker or you spend 15 minutes on a five marker. <laughs> This is a problem because then you don't have enough time to answer the following questions and then you run out of time, don't get the marks, don't get the grades. So one thing that I really did was if it's a five marker, spend five minutes on it. If it's a three marker, spend three minutes on it. So a minute per mark and that helps you time yourself because especially in an exam where you're stressed, you can lose track of time really quickly. Mm -hmm. So just be specific with the timing three minutes for a three marker, two minutes for a two marker, and that really helps making sure that you're not spending too much time on a question. I personally didn't do the whole one mark per question thing because it's like I'm concentrating, I'm really bad at multitasking, <laughs> I'm concentrating on the question and you also want me to be checking the clock on the other side of the room. I can't be doing that. So I just made sure that I do 
with so much practice by the time the exam came around i knew when i was spending too long on a question mm -hmm. that's where you want to be at because true, yeah. um sometimes the clock can be a bit like far and you can't really no, see yeah. it in example mm -hmm. but yeah so that's what i did personally and if i felt like i was spending too long on a question i would star it and move on to the next yeah. and then by the time i get to the end of the paper i can then go back Come to back. this so you want to be snappy with these questions but at the same time mm -hmm. you don't want to be too frantic yeah. which brings me up nicely to my next point which is when you're doing all these mock exams at school try your best to be calm don't get don't get nervous don't get stressed like it's okay they're just there to test you and to help you with your knowledge it's not actually the real thing yet you really want to be calm when approaching this like we understand biology is not easy and that's why this video is here for all of you it's not just for people getting the a's it's not just people getting the e's it's for all of you, you all yeah. need this video you all need to work on exam technique no one is going to be 100 perfect at it and yeah. that's why you practice and you get better and you need to have faith in yourself so just be more calm when approaching um mock exams and stuff and don't let them get the best of you you need to get the best of that paper yeah you've got i actually can't stress it enough like some people i know would avoid mock exams never do practice papers mm -hmm. and then it came to the real thing and they were like what is this mm -hmm. but i feel like me especially and you as well we did so much practice that even though i was going into the exam like i was of course nervous because i knew it was my real a level yeah. but i was still like there was a sense of calm in me because i was just like i know i've done this multiple times i've done multiple marks i've timed myself doing multiple papers mm -hmm. i know i can do this yeah so once you know you can sit a paper that you haven't seen before and get a good mark in it that's basically what your a-level paper is so that's why i can't stress it enough do as much practice as you can with papers you haven't seen before. When you do that practice, really embed all the exam techniques that we've spoken yeah. about in this video. Don't do it blindly because all you're doing is wasting your time and wasting, wasting papers. Time, yeah. But do it actively trying to implement these things. If it helps, write the things that we've suggested to you down and have it, you know, next to you when you're doing that paper yeah. to be able to refer to and then you will see it, you will naturally memorise all of that information. The questions are limited, like there are a lot, but they still are limited. Yeah. And that's that's why I always saved like papers that I know I haven't seen before to like the end where I was doing proper A-level practice for my exam because it was, it's going to get to a point where you have seen all the questions and it's just repeating mm -hmm. and that is good because you get used to the answers you get used to like answering those specific questions but there's something different about seeing a question you've never seen before and yeah. still being able to answer it so yeah don't waste your papers don't be like having done no revision i'm gonna go sit a paper <laughs> no really hope you guys have enjoyed this video we've given you guys a lot of tips and really hope you take it on board and it helps you and you see an improvement in your grades if you have any other questions please leave them down below make sure to like comment subscribe the red button down there just just press it <laughs> and turn on your post notifications whilst you're at it thank you so so much for watching and we'll see you guys next week Bye. Bye.